by Jamal. A lot of beautiful, beautiful cinematography and storytelling mm-hmm. has moved to television. Mm-hmm. It's a more episodic, um, a more, more something that an audience can live with mm-hmm. for a longer amount of time than just a feature. For the longest time, a feature was the pinnacle of what mm-hmm. you could create, and now that's, do you feel that's shifted? I think so. And in my opinion, in a lot of ways, um, feature film is still, you know, it's still the the mothercraft. It's still, you know, the goal is still my first love and my passion. Um, I think within the last, say, eight to ten years, um, the strength of storytelling on on television or streaming, episodic storytelling, has it just it's just gotten so good. That it's there's there's a there's a, 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 a difference between the two, but um, episodic storytelling has gotten so good with the amazing amounts of series that have been out, you know, from The Wire to The Breaking Bad to the Better. I, I can be going for days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's it, it is amazing. It's, it's, you know, it, I think it it hits a different part of the brain where it can hold your interest and hold that tension for a longer period of time, where with a feature, you have a condensed amount of time to get that thing done, to get that story done and, and, and solved. Um, so, um, but it's it's amazing where, you know, I got into filmmaking mainly just for what I want to do. I just want to make features, and that's it. I didn't even get television in a second thought. And now, I'm, you know, it's not like you have to choose between both. I just love both equally. Yeah. Um, there's it- just some incredible, incredible work being done on television right now i agree and and i think they both have the strong suits but it's funny like i'll watch a movie and you know it might even be a two-hour movie and i'll feel like oh, okay i know where they're going they're they're gonna they're gonna start wrapping this up you know where yeah <laughs> they say in film you know your character has an arc your character changes it starts in one place ends in a different place and in tv your character is a constant your character's flaws stay their flaws they mm-hmm. they might learn they might get a little better but that flaw is still going to be there so you're kind con- you're constantly rooting for that character to to change or to rise above what they do and then you know they might get to a point and then at the end of the episode they'll do something you're like ah oh, he's not changed he hasn't learned yeah <laughs> yeah you know it, it's you have you, you you have so much more rope with with episodic storytelling. You can really, really, really take the viewer on a long ride, and to the point you know, because of you know it's such a long ride. As a viewer, you you have more time to get attached to those characters, and you make a deeper connection with, with a lot of those characters. And I think that's where television may have the leg up on film. Um, it's it's the length of time you get to work on those characters. It's the slow growth. Or decline, you know, it's uh, you know you're really taking the viewer on a ride. Whereas on, on feature films, um, you know, you have two hours or, or ninety minutes or whatever, but uh, you don't you don't have as much leeway. You really gotta, you know, get get it moving from the jump. Um, what I will say though, with films still as compared to uh, television series, is that film. Movies are still so much more cinematic, and I think that uh, like watching something on Netflix or Amazon, like movies made by those two studios, uh, they don't have that cinematic factor. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, just visually, you don't feel like you're watching this. You know, they they feel like two-hour television shows, right? And that that's that's for me. That's 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 where I can see the difference. Okay, that's interesting, because um, I know the cinematography has just gotten like through the roof. You know, Breaking Bad really started the whole. You can use your visuals to tell a story, mm-hmm. um, and then there are other shows that really got into the more charoscurial lighting mm-hmm. um, that they've incorporated. That so I feel like television is like constantly going up there, and the boys on Amazon. That was a comic series that I loved back when it was like, you know, oh, this is like a really fucked up kind of counterculture thing to read. And 
now I see the show, and it almost looks like I'm watching something with a color palette of Batman vs. Superman mm-hmm. or something. So I feel like the visuals are catching up, but with a movie, they've got more money to throw at it. They've got... Right. There more has to be more stay. planning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's just, that's, that's where the difference is. It's like, um, you know, I feel like the cinematographers and film still have more of a playground there than they do on television. I think they might, you know, I can't speak to it, they might have a little more time or a mm-hmm. little more time to discuss with the directors, this is how I want to right. show this the feeling, time, this emotion. Time is everything, yeah. It is, it is. Yeah. And I know on TV it's wham, bam, bam. You know, you've yeah. shot half a show today. Yeah. And not to say that cinematography is bad as well. No, it's, it's outstanding. It's it just, uh, I feel I still feel the, the difference uh, between film and tele- between feature films and television. Uh, one is the cinematography and how it's and how it's achieved and, and done. But you know, there's great stuff everywhere. Um, uh, I, I think you know one thing that's translated well from screen to television, from big screen to television, is Mindhunters. That looks Mindhunters the TV show. It looks identical to every Fincher film. So you know. There's, there's, there's nothing was lost in translation. No, nothing at all. When I watched that, I mm-hmm. watched like one episode after the other, after the other, and I was like, I was like glued to it. I'm like telling my friends, this is the best show ever. It's and I go to rewatch it, and I'm like, yeah, it's a good show, but it's just, it's so engrossing. It's, it, when I watch that show, everything else around, it's like you're, everything shuts off. <laughs> yeah. And you just, you just sucked in, yeah. You almost so. turn on that analytical part of your mind and like, you're you're in the shoes of those people, you know. If, mo- if movies are, they, they say empathy machines, then you're almost following these people on these tasks and relating to them, in a way, and just kind of like sitting. You feel like you're sitting there with them. Yeah. You feel like you're on their side of the table. I love yeah, how they do that. It's just great. I mean, um, one of the things I also think with television, television, the writing on television, as you know. Movies went towards more big budget blockbusters, tent poles, you know, uh, prequels, sequels, reboots. It seemed like the where you know there used to be a really strong independent film market. It seemed like the, those writers and directors, those guys, went to television. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels. It feels like television is a great playground for, for you know for people who generally would probably end up making low budget independent film. Yeah, I know Roger That's- Deakins was um, interviewed about. You know, how do you feel about being on all these big, big films? And he says, well, I shoot two types of films. The huge blockbusters that cost X hundred million dollars. And then I shoot the super, super low, low budget stuff. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the middle anymore. And I feel like that stuff, that mid-budget stuff, has sort of moved to television. Absolutely. 100%. You know, Deacons is one of my favorites. It's probably one of everybody's favorites, but, you know... um, you know, uh, yeah, but he's got he's got a he's got a point, and he would know. He would know. <laughs> no more than me. So yeah. <laughs> now you know we talked about um, television. You spend more time yeah. with the characters, and you really get to care about them. One of the things that I've noticed when I've watched movies, um, probably over my journey of watching movies, is that older movies take a while to get started. You live with the character for longer. In Jaws, you live with chief brody and you see the shit he has to deal with day in day out and all of a sudden when he's thrown for this loop then oh well here comes act two right gotta hit the water we're like almost what close to halfway into the movie Mm -hmm. you know with rocky it's like an hour long act one yeah. Um, you spend a lot of time with that character, and then by the end, you you so want them to win. It's not like you know we've just jumped into this thing with this guy, and he's a handsome man who for some reason can't get a date, and right. <laughs> and you know you yeah. you just you're just thrown into it, and you're expected to take things for granted. What are your feelings on um, a longer first act, or is there a way to get that done to accomplish what that does more quickly? I think things kind of move too fast now. Anyway, that's just my feeling. I think the, it's funny you name those two movies, but those are always going to be all-time classics because those films took time. They pretty much you live with those characters. They came to be almost like 
family to you by relation, you know, mm. by, uh, by, by visual relation. And it makes you invest in these characters so you really understand them and you feel the way they would feel once they get thrown into these, you know, trying situations. Um, it, it doesn't bother me. I don't, you know, uh, I, as long as the movie's entertaining and, it, and the, it, the craftsmanship is great, I tend to like a slower-paced uh, films in a lot of ways. I don't like when things just uh, move so so quick and you get to the end, you're just like, what the hell happened? You know? yeah, did the <laughs> movie go over my head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so, and I, mean, I don't mind adrenaline movies either, especially, you know, especially if they can keep it going. But hmm. um, There's a certain point where it's almost just like too much that you're almost like left glazed over like you don't you don't care it's just a, such a cacophony of this and that and this and that bang 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 um yeah. one movie i will say that does achieve what i was talking about like getting to know a character in a very very short amount of time is guardians of the galaxy nice yeah that was great i i was just amazed that first scene like it just tugs on your heart it's like up up does the same mm -hmm. thing Oh, um, I mean, also I you are kind of seeing yeah. the day in the life, but it's it's like within six minutes. Um, yeah. But I don't know if it's just that emotional connection, and if there's a way to like speed that up, or if there's either slowing down or finding a way to speed up. You know, you got to find what's right for your story. Yeah, you know, it's just the formula hasn't changed really. It's just finding a way to manipulate human emotion. That's it for the viewer. If you can control the viewer's emotions, it, actually time doesn't matter, you know? It's all about how quick, how, you know, it, it's all about if you can do that. If you can program the audience, if you can get the audience to feel what you want them to feel, when you want them to feel it, you've won. And that's, you know, so it's pretty much, you know, the amount of time it takes to do that, I guess really doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, just accomplish your goal and yes, do it well. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks so much for talking with me, Jamal. Jamal, where can we see your previous work? So on Vimeo, you can see my stuff. Uh, I'm just Jamal R. Green on Vimeo. Um, you can find uh, Chronicles of on all social media platforms. Uh, you know, just that Chronicles of on Instagram, Twitter, uh, our Facebook page. Um, and but usually, but just all my uh, previous work should be available on Vimeo, just under Jamal R. Green. All right, and we'll have links to all those in the description. Thanks again for going Indie Depth. Thank you.